Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to set up positioning and sizes inside of your script UI. Now usually when I create scripts, I let it automatically generate the width, the height, and the scale of everything uh, based on how many elements are added. But now today I'm going to go over how to create your own custom sized UI and elements and how it all works. So what we're going to end up creating is this script that first asks us for a width and height of our script. So I can say maybe 500 by 200. And then we can select the position on the screen in which it will appear. So if it's 0, 0, it'll appear all the way up here. And 1920 by 1080 in the bottom corner. So I can just say maybe 960 by 540 to put it in the center. And hit save to load up our custom sized UI. Now of course you can use this technique to then apply the same custom sizes and margins and things to your elements inside of the main UI. But in this tutorial, we're going to be using a window to figure out how we can set up a custom size and bounds for our UI elements. And of course, before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon down below to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this project in the GitHub link. And you can also follow us down there on Instagram to get updates when videos are live and other cool behind the scenes stuff. And just a reminder to also follow us on Discord where we have over 50 members talking about general things, scripting, extensions, and plugins. And from here you can get lots of help with questions, help others, and just get to know other scripters and extension writers. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started by creating a new JavaScript file. And what we need to do is sort of create the same setup where we input the width and the height and then the uh, position values, which are the X and the Y. And basically we want to have a window to set up the positioning, a window to set up the uh, size, and then a final window, which will be containing the size information and position information. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a couple of variables, one called X, one called Y, one called width, and one called height. These are going to be global variables, which we'll refer to back later and fill them up. And this is going to be representative of how big our UI is, as well as where on the screen it's going to appear. So now we need to create our first window. So we can add a comment saying this is going to be our size window. And of course, we'll just call it the size window. Set equal to a new window. And it's going to be type palette. And we'll call it the size window, which will display that as text. And then we'll set undefined for the size parameters. Now, obviously, this video is all about setting up these size parameters, but we're going to set up these first two initial windows without them so that we can set them later. So then we'll go ahead and set our size window orientation equal to a column. So anything we put inside of it will go from top to bottom. Then we're going to need basically two elements. We're going to need a group to contain our uh, width and height inputs, and then we'll need a button to move on to the next step. So now I'm going to create a size group uh, to contain my inputs for the width and height. And I'll just set this equal to the size window. And we're going to add a group, undefined parameters, and call it size group. And then everything inside of here will go from left to right. So we can have width on the left and height on the right. And in order to make sure that happens, we're going to set the orientation of our group equal to a row. Then we'll create a width edit text and a height edit text. These are going to be inputs for the, obviously those parameters. And we're going to add these to the size group. So we'll say size group dot add. We're going to add edit text. And we'll just say W inside of here. We can copy and paste this and say H for height. Or better yet, we could even type it out if we want. And I also want to make these elements the same size so things are pretty symmetrical. And I'll just say the size is equal to something like 50 by 25. And then I'll copy and paste this for the height text as well. And then lastly, we're going to add a uh, size OK button. And we're going to add this to the size window, not the group, because we want to go down below the group. And we're going to add a button. And the button will just say OK. And now I'll go ahead and grab my size window center it in the middle of the screen and then I'll grab my size window again and show it. One more thing we'll do is grab our size OK button and create an on click event for it. We're inside of here. Once we click on that OK button, we want something to happen. And in our case, we want to uh, hide the first window and move on to the next one. 
So in order to do that, first I'm gonna grab my size window and just say hide. You can run this in After Effects or Extend Script or any other script UI application, but After Effects has a nice look to it, so I'm just gonna use it. So first we have our width and height inputs. We could put in whatever we want. And once we hit OK, and then it's going to move on and we now need to have our next window, which will have our position uh, inputs. So what I'm gonna actually do is just copy and paste the size window. And I'm gonna change every word in the current selection that says size. And I'm going to change it to position. And I'm gonna click on replace all. And that should replace most of what we need here. Uh, a couple of them were case sensitive. So this will be the position window with caps. We have our position group. And then we wanna change our width and height edit text to be our X edit text and our Y edit text. And then we can change the names inside of here. And that looks good. Once we have hidden our size window, we can now uh, center and show our position window. And now if we go ahead and run it, we put in some information here, click on OK, and now our position window is going to pop up. And we actually need to change the this to be size instead of position. That's one thing it seemed to have added there. And then uh, once we click on the position OK button, we need an on click for that as well. That's going to take us to our last step, which is going to take in all of the previous variables we have here. Uh, which are going to be set in just a minute and then create our overall UI using a special algorithm which is really simple. So once we hit the OK position button, we're going to need to hide our position window. So we'll say position window dot hide. And then we need to create a another window. So I'm going to create a variable that's a global called main window and I'm going to define it right here and say main window is equal to a new window. Now, the parameters now are going to be a palette type window. We're just going to call this our custom sized window. And now, instead of like usual typing in undefined for the, the bounds, we're going to go ahead and go over it since that's the main purpose of this tutorial. We have these previous windows set up to give us values for the height, width, and position of what our window should be. Now we can put them inside of our bounds uh, argument. If you go into the object model viewer or just look up under the script UI class, uh, how exactly we do our bounds, all we need to do is give it a bounds object, the bounds of the windows drawable area, excluding the frame in screen coordinates. So the coordinate system of a screen works a little bit differently. It doesn't start from the middle. It starts from the top left and goes right and down as the values increase. And whenever we create a new window, you can see we need the type, which we set to palette. And then uh, our bounds object, if we click on it, is going to be uh, four things. We need an X, a Y, a width, and a height. And it's not just as simple as that. We need to do a little bit of addition. But now what we need to do is get those into variables. So we have this X, Y, width, and height right here, which we're going to set up now. So when they click on first the size button, we need to set up these variables for width and height. So I'm gonna say width is equal to our width edit text dot text. And what we need to actually do is parse it because it's gonna give us a string of text. We need to convert that into an integer or a number that this can use as the actual width for the window. So I'm gonna parse the text and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the height. Our height is going to be equal to our height edit text dot text and our width will be equal to our width edit text dot text parsed out. And then the same thing when we click on OK for our position window, we need to do the same thing for our X and Y variables. So I can just copy and paste this and change it to X. Change this to Y and then change the elements in here as well. And now we can go ahead and use these to define our UI parameters. Again, if we look at the bounds, we need four values, X, Y, width, and height. So if I just go ahead and type in X, Y, width, and height, in theory, that should give us the window we want. Um, let's go ahead and make sure we have done everything right here. We have hidden our window, set up all of our variables, created our new window, and now we just need to show it. We don't need to center it because we're defining the position here. So I'm just going to say main window dot show. And if I go ahead and run this, 
First thing I'm gonna do is put in a height. We'll say 500 by 500, hit OK. And for the position, we'll do the center of the screen again and hit OK. So now you can see we're getting our custom sized window, but the problem is the position is right, but the width and height are not. Now there's a very easy fix for this and it's just how the screen space coordinates work uh, for this process. What we need to do is uh, basically add the X and Y to the width and height. What this is saying is the X and Y that we give it are the initial is the initial point of where everything begins. So I set that to be the middle of the screen. So when I hit uh, 960 by 540, it hit, puts the position of our window right in the middle of the screen. Then for the width and height, it's gonna try and set that to be the width and the height, but that's not just a value. You can't just say 500 uh, is gonna be the height. We need to add the X and the Y back in order for it to be starting there at X and Y, add 500, or and then add 500 the other way. So if we go ahead and take our width and add X, and take our height and add Y, we should get the proper values. So let's go ahead and run the script, put in 500 by 500, and once again, we'll stick it right in the center of the screen and hit OK. And now we have a 500 by 500 custom size window appearing in the position we want with the width and height we want. So you can really go crazy as much as you want uh, dealing with these bounds and the width and height. Uh, just remember that the first two values for the X and the Y are the start point of your script. And if you want to have a height or width custom input for it, you need to add the original uh, point because if you don't add the original values back to these points It won't make them additive in the sort of screen space resolution that we're dealing with But that's actually gonna do it for this video guys That's how simple it is to set up custom widths and heights and positions for your elements It's all relative in that you just need to give it the position and then add the width and height of your desired uh, element of course, make sure you guys hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe icon down below and the bell button next to it to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. In the description again, you can check out the GitHub link for the code to create your own custom sized UI like this. And you can also check out the Instagram link and follow us there for updates. Again, don't forget to follow us on the Discord where you can get help with general questions, scripting, extensions, and plugins, as well as help others out and get to know other people. And lastly, if you'd like to donate in the description, there are addresses to crypto addresses, and that is always welcome and accepted as donation. But thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next one.